This is one of the best radar applications I have found for Linux. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason Cam for ACK. In the southeast where I live, in the springtime, severe weather is always a threat. And having a really good radar application on your phone and your computer is a must-have application. Now, for years, I have ran Radar Scope on my phone and on my Mac. Windows users are probably familiar with GR Level 3. But I was looking for some sort of alternative to run on Linux. And I have found something that is equivalent to Radar Scope and GR Level 3 that we can run natively on Linux. It's called Supercell WX. And today, we're going to take just a few minutes and get this thing installed and configured. It's one of the easier apps to get going on Linux. Now, I'll leave a link down below, but if you simply do a Google search for Supercell WX, it should be the very first link that you run across. Uh, and that is the GitHub page. So let's go ahead and load that up. Once we get over to the GitHub page, let's go ahead and scroll down until you see this releases right over here on the right hand side and click on that 0.4.8. Well, at least that's the latest version as of the time of this recording. We're going to click right there and then we're going to scroll down. Now, they've got this for several different architectures here, so you'll have to select the correct architecture for your setup. Uh, they looks like this will run on Arch64, which is going to be the Raspberry Pi 64-bit uh, image. Now, I haven't tried that one, uh, but it is available. They also have a Windows version right here that you can download the self-installing Windows file. But what I am looking for is this x86-64 app image. So I'm going to just go ahead and click on that and give that just a couple of seconds to download. It's not a very big file. It's only about 64 megs. Now, I'm running this on one of the Evolve laptops, so these are known to have a slower processor. This application does run better on my X1 Carbon laptops, but we should be able to get it up and running on this Evolve without any trouble whatsoever. Once that download is complete, we can just go ahead and close the browser window and we'll open up a file explorer. Let's navigate over to the downloads directory and we should see that new app that we just downloaded. Now, we do need to make this executable, so I'm going to right click on that and come down to properties. Let's click on the permissions tab right here and let's choose right here this checkbox for allow executing file as a program and it is that simple. This application is now installed. If we simply double click on this, that should start the application for us. Now you will get this setup configuration the first time you go through, so I'm just going to go ahead and choose next. The very first thing it's going to ask you is which map provider you want to use uh, that's going to give you your background map on the radar. I suggest using MapTiler. It's the one that I used, and it was uh, free and pretty easy to set up. You can go ahead and click right here to get the MapTiler API key. Once you've got your key, just go ahead and plug it in right here where the question mark is. Next, it's going to ask you about your grid width and height. For now, we're just going to leave this set to one and one for both of these, but I'll show you how that changes once we get into the application. Let's go ahead and click Next here. And finally, let's click Finished. I told you guys the setup for this is pretty dadgum simple. Now, it's going to default to St. Louis, Missouri. We're going to change that in just a second. You've got your radar right here in the main screen. Any active warnings will show up down here in this bottom section. Now, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and turn those alerts off. So let's go up to View and let's uncheck alerts. That gives us a full screen radar that we can play with. Now, the next thing I want to do is go ahead and set this to my home radar. We're going to do that by clicking on these three buttons right up here in the top left corner. That's going to bring up a list of known radars. So I'm going to search for KOHX, which is Nashville, and we'll just say OK. That's going to go ahead and change us over to the Nashville area. 
and load up that radar data. Now, if you're not familiar with Level 3 radar, this is all raw radar data. So what you're seeing here is not rain on the map. Uh, we can come over to the left-hand side under the map style. Uh, we can choose either satellite, streets, street dark, several others. I like streets dark. Uh, that's my preference when I'm running this, but that allows me to zoom in and really see street level detail. Something else that I like to do is choose smooth that radar data. That'll clean it up just a little bit for you. Now, we've got level 2 weather products right here, followed by level 3 weather products. So, you uh, see this one right here is chosen. That is reflectivity. Now, if you don't know what each of these uh, abbreviations are, if you simply click this drop-down bar, it will tell you what you're looking at, either super res reflectivity, digital reflectivity, or composite reflectivity. Now, keep in mind that all of the weather products are not available from every single radar site. So you'll need to know that. If something doesn't pop up, you'll have to make a different choice here. But we've also got several different tilts here. And guys, I'm not a meteorologist, but... I do like to keep up with the weather, and I know just a little bit, probably just enough to be dangerous. Uh, but each of these tilts is which direction the radar is looking up into the atmosphere. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, we'll leave this set at tilt one right now. One thing I forgot to mention is right up here in the top, once you select your radar, it will tell you what mode the radar is in. So right now we're in clear air mode, other times, you will see this in precipitation mode. Now, some of the other products that I really keep up with are velocity. Uh, that'll show me wind and wind directions. Correlation coefficient can help you spot when uh, debris is picked up by a tornado and lofted into the atmosphere. Another one of my favorite products is VIL, or Vertically Integrated Liquid. That one is helpful for kind of uh, becoming aware when hail is embedded within a thunderstorm. And finally, the last one that I use the most is ET or Echo Tops. And this will just let you know how tall that thunderstorm is. It can also give you some early indications if the thunderstorm is starting to collapse. Now, I told you guys that I would tell you about that grid layout, so let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Let's come up to File, and then come down to Settings, and you'll see your grid height and grid width here. So, let's go ahead and change one of these. So, instead of one by one, let's make this two by one. Go ahead and click Apply down here. And, oh, I also want to change my default radar to be Nashville. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'll select that. And now Nashville is my default radar site. Clock format up here, all kinds of different preferences in here. But the main one I wanted to show you was this grid and the way that works. So now that we've got those changes made, let's click Apply and let's click OK. Now, you will need to close the application and open it back up, so give me just a second to get that done. Now, once the application opens back up, you'll see that I have two different grids here. So, a radar on the left and uh, one on the right. What that allows us to do is compare two different weather products at the exact same time. So, on the left-hand side, I've got reflectivity loaded up. On the right-hand side, I've got velocity loaded up. To change between these two, you simply come over and click on the product that are the uh, image that you want to see. Now, the cool thing about this is this allows us to scroll in and scroll out, and wherever we're looking is going to track between the two uh, panels. So it's a really cool way to see two radar products side by side. Now, if you prefer this to be a uh, instead of a vertical split, you want a horizontal split. What you would need to do is go back up here to settings, and instead of setting the width to two, you would set the height to two. And I believe you can get up to four different panes all at one time if you want that much information. Kind of depends on your screen size as to how much is really going to be helpful. Most of the time, I only run these two panes 
I'll almost always have reflectivity in the left and in whatever other weather product I want to compare that with in the right. Okay, so I pulled up some historical data, and you can do that right down here in the timeline view. This is from April the 3rd at 2359 UTC. That's another really, really cool feature of Supercell WX is being able to look at what's happened in the past. So you'll see right uh, here on the left-hand side, I do have reflectivity pulled up. On the uh, right-hand side, I've got the vertically integrated liquid. When you have warnings on the screen, if you simply hover over one of these lines, it will pop up the data from the National Weather Service telling you exactly what's going on with that watch or warning. So you can see here, this was a tornado warning at this particular time. Now, if we left click on that, it will actually open up that same warning in this pop-up dialog box. So any of these that I hover over will pop up and tell me exactly what's going on. Now, what I was telling you earlier, let's go ahead and zoom in on this particular warning that came out right here. And you can now see how you can quickly and easily compare two different weather products. Again, we've got reflectivity on the left and we've got vertically integrated liquid on the right. So there's a look at Supercell WX. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.